Okay, so we it says live, but it says record only. So I think it's just you and me. Okay, oh, so yeah. hi guys for another episode. Um, this is where we interview sellers, normal sellers like you. No, it's not just about nine figure sellers and eight figure sellers and seven figure sellers. It's about showing you that this is a legitimate real world business that normal everyday people that have got jobs and got families and got lives just like you are doing so you can know it's legitimate and hopefully learn some tips and tricks from people actually in the game doing it. So we've got yeah. Luke Huntley. Hey, Luke, how you doing? Hello. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Great stuff. Great stuff. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for, for no agreeing to share some of your journey and, and, and some of your experiences and stuff with us. Uh, I love doing these things. I love chatting to people. I know it's not the first time we've chatted. It's not the first time we've met, but at the same time, I'm probably going to deep dive into you a little bit more than I probably have before. So I'm going to learn a bunch of stuff about you. So it should be fun. So um, first of all, tell me who's Luke. Tell me who you are. Tell me about what you do. Give us some of your background. Cool. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, I am. I'm Luke. Uh, I've started an Amazon business um, officially eight, probably eight, nine months ago. Um, it is a side hustle at the moment. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm aiming for it to be full time, um, which I'm well on the way to doing. Uh, I, I'm a mechanic full time, have been since I left school. So that's 20, 20 something years now. So that's that's cracking on. Yeah. Uh, two two children um, and a wife and a dog. So home home is pretty busy, fun, but busy. So, yeah, yeah cool. if, I, if I can. Carol. So, 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 uh, you said you've been, been a mechanic forever. Literally, have you worked for the same company that whole time, or not the same company? But I left right. school at, at fifteen, um, and I've been yeah. in it ever since. Um, wow. Only a couple of different companies, actually. So it's not been a, a whole load. But so, I don't know is, it, else. is it is it fair to say that you you don't know a whole lot else? But mm. when it comes to fixing cars, you're probably quite good. I imagine in twenty years in the game, twenty odd years yeah. in the game. Yeah, there's not not much I haven't seen or or had a go at up to this point. So, no, that's yeah. cool. Okay, so so how do you feel about your job? Um, do you like it or do you hate it or what? It's a it's a difficult one because it's been really good to me. I've yeah. I've never been made redundant. I haven't been out. I shouldn't have said that, should I? I haven't been out of work. <laughs> that's um, Yeah, dope. There's always there's people are always looking for for a good mechanic. So there's always places to go. Um, but when I just made the decision to uh, become a mechanic after school, yeah, my, my dad warned me at the time it might not be something I wanted to do forever, uh, and he was right. It's not. Um, it's not what I want to do forever. It's, is, it, uh, is it something that your dad did then? How did he know you wouldn't want to do it forever? He he's uh, quite uh, mechanical as well, so he's quite hands on with things. Um, he started uh, doing that kind of thing, uh, and then I had his own business uh, up until he retired. So. I think he knew that I was similar and there was, we'd probably want more. And there was, I don't know, maybe a bit of creativity, a bit of, a bit of a desire to do something, not more, but, uh, but different. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you think that, that, that desire, that inner desire that I think a lot of us share, I don't think it's, it, I think a lot yeah, of people. I agree. Yeah. So do you think that desire for more is what brought you to on your Amazon journey? hundred percent yeah I, I tried a couple of businesses beforehand um, just trying to find something that would make me self-employed basically something that yeah. I could build myself yeah um, so what did but, you try what were those couple of things that you've tried oh I found tried some interesting ones um, <laughs> from from selling uh, laptop skins and wall stickers um, to a couple of known herbal supplement companies yeah um, to, I, I planned to open my own garage sort of half-heartedly because it, it wasn't what I wanted to do, but it was something I knew I could do. Yeah. Um, so I've basically just taken all the difficult roads <laughs> that I could to get me away from where I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so do, do you think then, since you've tried a couple of things in the past and it's not quite what you wanted to do, do you think now, and I know you're only nine months into your Amazon journey-ish, but do you think that this is something that you could see yourself doing long term definitely yeah this feels it feels a lot more like something 
that I can build on and actually create. I can actually see where I'd like to be and uh, more importantly, how I can get there. Yeah. Which is, okay. which is important. So, so how much did you start out with when you were starting out? Um, did you come straight into online arbitrage and retail arbitrage or what, 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 how did you, how did your journey start on Amazon? Um, I actually started uh, on private label. Okay. Through, um, through an, an American based company. Yeah. Which was really good. I mean, I, I, I looked to, to maybe to go there again in the future to, towards yeah. the private label. Uh, but there was a lot more research and stuff that needed to be done. A lot more money needed to be laid out initially to get going. Yeah. So some some pennies were lost, unfortunately, during that first bit. Um, yeah. But during that, I learned so much about the Amazon platform that I realized there was really something here that I could that I could work with. So it made no sense to just quit. And you thought, you know what, I'm going to pivot. I'm going to pivot from private label and I'm going to try OA, RA, uh, is that right? Have you done both? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the people that I was learning from then uh, predominantly did PL, um, but they did OA as well. But it yeah. wasn't. It, it was it was different in America. Um, then I came across the Secret Wealth Project, kind of the UK version to me at the time, and yeah. it all made so much more sense that that was uh, that's where it started really. Yeah. I, I mean, my journey on Amazon, at least, was probably quite similar to yours. Then I started in private label, even though a lot of people do it the other way around. I started in private label, yeah. realized that the dream that they'd painted wasn't quite going to unfold the way that I'd hoped, at least. Yeah. And and didn't want to just scrap it. And I'd made some good money doing it, but then lost some good money, too. Like, I remember this one shipment that landed in New York, I think it was, it was packaged wrong. It had to, I had the option of either sending it back to China or burning it at my cost about, about yeah. 10 grand. I think it cost me 10 grand or something like that. Just that one little yeah. thing. Whereas the beauty of OA is you only buy the stock when you know it's going to sell. So it's brands with proven demand. Um, yeah. And I guess that did that, is that what appealed to you? So you went from, having to lay out a load of money, create demand in private label to go in. No, I'll only buy it if I know I can sell it. And is that is that what appealed, do you think? Yeah, definitely. The, the research involved in the private label, as you know, was it was a lot deeper. Um, yeah. I actually had a, I had a similar problem where they sent all of my stock, which was supposed to come to me. They sent it straight to a fulfillment center um, and a fulfillment right. center didn't know it was coming. So I lost out you know, quite a large figure as well. Um, but then yeah. when I started looking to OA, yeah, I could, I could see, um, what was selling, uh, and it, it just made so much more sense. It, it didn't seem like such a, a dangerous step as the, uh, yeah. as private label. I, I think if, 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 if you, if you make private label work, you could potentially do very, very, very well from it. But yeah. the pitfalls in private label are deep, many and expensive <laughs> and it only takes only takes you to trip up over one yeah. and all of a sudden you lose a lot of money and your dreams kind of crumble. I'm not trying to bash private label. I've been harsh right, on private right. label over the, over the years. I think some approaches to private label are good and can work for you. But the stuff that most people do is, I think, not a quick way to losing your money, but but more that way than the way they paint it. But OA, yeah. it's kind of simple, isn't it? So talk to me about your OA journey then. Is it exclusively online arbitrage that you've done or have you done RA as well, or do you a bit of, bit of both, or what? Uh, it's predominantly uh, online arbitrage. I have yeah. dabbled uh, with a couple of bits of retail, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I stick to, to online really. I suppose uh, over the last nine months that you started it during crazy times, we're doing RAs a little bit. Some people do it, but it's a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, it has. It's been eight months where I've taken it really seriously. Right. I did kind of. I did start at the end of. Where are we now? 2019. Um, yeah. But I, I wasn't taking it that seriously then. So it's really for an eight month, 10 month maybe block that it's been. Yeah. Okay. I'm with the goal. So, so with regards to your OA journey then, what was the initial investment that you started with? How much capital did you have when you first started? I was around £1,500 uh, yeah. that, that I put in straight away. Yeah. But there was. Go on. Go on. So I was just going to say there were some uh, some bits and pieces that I didn't have at the time, uh, so that money went quite fast and, and not in the right direction. So, uh, 
What do you mean by bit, bits and pieces you didn't have? Well, when I came from uh, using a different company, there wasn't. They didn't really mention any software. Right. So I started. I actually started. I suppose a lot of people did start like that. Just looking on Argos, John Lewis, and, and places like that at the Lego prices, and then moving over to the Amazon platform and seeing if where the differences were, and yeah. just completely winging it like that. Nice. So. <laughs> it so, what, so you, yeah yeah absolutely so you was just going right it's selling for 10 pound in the sale in argos and it's selling yep. for 22 pound 99 on amazon so i'll buy some and see what happens is yeah. that okay yeah. but at the point at that time i had no idea how many were selling if i was allowed to sell it or anything like that so i think most of that initial 1500 pound was spent on products that i couldn't even sell and i had to then sell them on ebay yeah, uh, so. bad buys, bad buys, really. But yeah, but you yeah. probably recovered your cash, did you, by selling on on, on eBay? Yeah, I, there was there was wasn't a lot of profit to be made, but I covered covered myself and enough to to start again. Okay, so you got your money back. That's good. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so you said that then you find some software. What software was that? Uh, I tried uh, a couple of different ones. Uh, yeah. I've ended up sticking with uh, Buybot Pro for my deal analysis. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's I, I, could, it's I couldn't actually be without it now. If I think if I was to have anything taken away and it was going to tip things over, it would be that because I, oh, I, yeah. I just use it for, for everything. A, a lot of people think that Barbot Pro is just for like beginners, but obviously it's super helpful for beginners. It's almost essential, yeah. but, but like the biggest, most veteran sellers ever use Barbot yeah. Pro. And like you say, how would you even manage without it? Like to go yeah. back, just winging it it just don't really work does it and it's so time consuming <laughs> doing anything without it as well i yeah. mean there are yeah you, you can just wing it but the, the time that you save is just is uh is yeah very and then important. you're going to prevent prevent a lot of bad buys as well aren't you? because those yeah. things that you couldn't sell for example that end, ended up on ebay or buy yeah. pro told you in one click in a few seconds oh you yeah. can sell it. this is how many it's selling on all that stuff do you use any other software uh back i use online arbitrage deals um yeah. as well as manual sourcing yeah um which which, which fits perfectly with buybot pro so that's it's, it's the, it is really the time I'm very busy during the day anyway uh yeah. and having those two together means that i don't have to spend the, you know three hours of frustration and stress that i had when i started now it's just cut the time down so much yeah, absolutely. Um, no, no, those two work beautifully in tandem. Yeah. Um, so you, you mentioned manual sourcing. What does that process look like to you then? How do you go about manual sourcing? What what What's your thing? Uh, Bible Pro, again, uh, I go, uh, I use the feature on there where I can just look at products online. Um, and then it's got an excellent feature where I can just highlight it uh, and right click it, choose the marketplace and it will come up uh on the script on the same screen uh, and i could just scroll down pick the product um and do my analysis whilst i'm looking at that screen on argos or john lewis or wherever else i'm looking which is yeah. Really so quick. You, yeah so the, you use the manual source and accelerator you know yeah. what what i didn't realize um but i was told the other day that for many 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 months i think maybe even this was put in last year i don't think you have to highlight the title you know the title yeah I think right click it so you want to try that next time you use wow, it because that, that alone oh. is a massive time saver yeah. I was yeah. told that we implemented that ages ago and i didn't know about it and oh, I've, okay. made, I've made videos whereby i've been like highlight the yeah, thing still highlight the top. you don't need to you just right click it this is what i'm told um oh wow. so yeah so so yeah yeah so so what do you do then do you go to everyday stores and go in the clearance sections or do you just go through random stores how do you find your stores and how do you find the deals when you do a manual sourcing what what's your process for that having done it for a little while now there's a there's a few stores that i just keep going back to uh, i don't I, i'm really aiming now to build a, a replenishable list that i can keep going back to every month and restocking yeah so i don't tend to do the the clearance or the or, okay. or the aisles or anything like that i, I tend to just keep going back um and I know that there's going to be deals on in certain stores, so it's just a matter of checking if those deals are are on 
um, when I'm looking to buy, really. Yeah. So that's I think that's the advantage of experience and what people don't realise at first. Yeah. You're building up that replenishable list and yeah. you're going back. So everybody's they might be looking at new deals that are out there and maybe facing some saturation issues and stuff as OA has find brand new deals in the easiest to find stuff in Tesco and all that stuff. But you're yeah. going back and and um, as Luke D calls it, building yep. your Bible. That's yeah. it. Well, yeah, Nat, Nat calls it replenishables and yeah. Luke calls it the Bible, but it's um, <laughs> yeah, the Bible. It's just it is a solid a solid way to build to build a base, um, yeah. which is important. <laughs> and, and you've only been doing it nine, nine months. Imagine once you've been doing it. I don't want to say nine yeah. years. But imagine when you've been doing it yeah. for eighteen months or three yeah. years. Like that that list, that replenishable list, is going to get nice and long. So yeah. um, so what platforms you, you do you sell actively on eBay as well then or is it just mostly Amazon and just the odd return or something on it's, eBay? It's just the odd return really on eBay. It's nothing yeah. nothing serious. Um, I got rid of quite a lot of my private label products that didn't pan out on Amazon on there. So I have got a power seller account, but um, I, I, I don't use it to its full potential yet. So 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 what what's what's your why if if somebody said look you work really hard you pay you paid pretty well like what what's your biggest why like is it are you trying to achieve um i don't know what's your why why do you do it it's it sounds cheesy but it is my family um uh, i i love it's not even that i want to give them things i just want to go on adventures with them and spend yeah. time with them uh holidays and uh, my kids are eight and ten. Uh, they're obsessed with camper vans, so you know, the, the idea of just having a camper and disappearing for half of the school holidays and just having an adventure, just just fun cool. stuff. So you so, want to invest in experiences for them rather yeah. than physical goods. I think that's I think that's healthy. I think I, I don't. I, I'm not going to judge parenting, but I think some people can uh, spoil the kids, and I don't think it's a good thing. I don't think spoiling your kids uh -huh. is a good. thing. But spoiling them with experiences is almost always a good thing in my mind. So yeah. taking them to that water park that they want to go to or taking them to that place at the coast or taking them to that foreign destination, I think it's all good. I think I don't think there's any downsides to that personally. But I mean, that's just me. But no, when, I totally when, agree. You agree, yeah. yeah. So I, I could, I could probably, properly spoil my kid with all kinds of stuff. But the way I see it is, look, even at even at your birthday and Christmas, you got a budget. You got a budget. I can afford to buy more, but you shouldn't have more because it's inappropriate. And it's weird. It's just yeah. me. It's just the way I am. Are you the same? I'm I'm the same. Uh, uh, yeah. Last Christmas as well, because we were in lockdown, they the things arrived, uh, and they I, they had too much stuff from yeah because all the, the family want to spoil them, and I know I know that if you give them a, a spade and put them on the beach, that that's them for five hours or. You know, yeah. if you throw something in the garden, they're gone. So, yeah, I just think experiences are much more important. And that's, that's the that's the aim. I think so. So so let's let's um, let's take it back to your Amazon journey, what you picked up on the way. So what lessons have you learned so far on your journey with regards to OA? And I don't know, it could be a sourcing tip. It could be a, a buying tip. I don't know. What, what, what lessons have you learned? If I was to go back right to the beginning now, yeah, uh, I just because we've spoken about it, Bible Pro would have saved me my initial fifteen hundred pound. I think if I could go back oh, to that, nice. uh, that was, so that one piece of software, uh, and not to worry about on gating as well. That was something that really stumped me when I started. Everything seemed okay. to be gated, and I spent a lot of time focusing on getting ungated. Uh, right. Looking looking at it now, I, I feel I spent too much time focusing on the closed doors and kind of missing all the open doors. If that like makes it. sense, that was, yeah, uh, like that was so. So, have those doors opened over time to you, or are you just saying, look, don't look at all the negatives, kind of just focus on the positives? So, which is it? Um, a, a bit of both, I suppose. Um, oh. For me, I, I wasn't as restricted, I think, as some of the new sellers are now because I had a, a private label uh, branded. Um, been going on on Amazon before. I think that must have helped. Yeah. Uh, and I and I think in the last year and a half there have been more restrictions uh, for people. But yeah, definitely. I just focus on the positives because if you keep going through the the open doors, 
uh, some of them do open on their own. Um, in fact, Bible Pro to just for me today, I hit, uh, it told me I wasn't eligible and I just pressed on gate. I didn't think it would work. Um, and it just came out, yeah, because you've sold a certain amount, um, you've obviously trusted, and that was it. Bang, was, that door was straight open. So, Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I, I love it. The first time I clicked that button, I think I, I was making a video and I clicked the button almost expecting to show it saying, like, oh, it didn't work or whatever. And it ungated me. I'm like, oh, yeah. my God. As easy yeah. as that. Yeah. So somebody without Buybot Pro would look at that and go, oh, I can't sell it. But somebody yeah. with Buybot Pro just clicks on gate and it ungates it. It's like, oh, my God, now I can sell it. And it's that that alone is is a game changer. So did you find yourself uh, clicking a lot on gate on Buybot Pro then? Or do you think it, time has ungated more? Have you, what What's that look like? I think... I think the more that I followed products that I could sell, yeah. it, it obviously does a lot for your for your seller account. Yeah. Uh, and now, when the doors do uh, are closed and uh, and I and I go to one gate, they do they are they are opening uh, yeah more frequently, which is yeah. which is a, a great feeling. Even if the deal's not right, it's still a great feeling when it tells you you're yeah. ungated because it's a possi it's a possibility for the future then as well. Yeah, I'm never going to sell bleach uh, <laughs> bath for removing horseshoes but right. i love that i can yeah so look, it's nice to know i could if i wanted to yeah <laughs> exactly so okay so what what would you if you was if you was if you was teaching somebody um your best strategy your best most hidden amazing strategy can you think of one that you would pass on something that's just like gold um that everybody needs to know but maybe maybe new sellers don't know I know that's put you on the spot. Yeah, well, only because a lot of I don't do as much uh, manual sourcing as as others do because I rely I don't rely, but because I use uh, online arbitrage deals as well. Yeah, uh, but there's even a few ways that I use that. Sometimes I won't always take the deal it's showing me. Um, I'll go to the page that that deal came from and see if there's any anything else on that page. So it's also. It's also it helps me find other products. It's generally, it tells me uh, shops, uh, stores that the products are coming from, uh, and different categories. There's categories that I hadn't thought of uh, when I first. I've heard a lot of people say this. Did you learn this tip from somebody? Or... I heard. I heard it from uh, from Luke again. From Luke again. Um, I didn't really understood it when he said it, and then I, I gave it a quick go, and I was like, "Oh yes." Uh, I had done it before accidentally, but I think when you hear someone kind of reiterate something, you're like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that works." Yeah, nice. So, so you go, so you go to onlinearbitragedeals.com, and you might see a deal on there, but you go, "Okay, so what, what's your thought process when you see a deal? What, how, how do you expand that out? What is it? Do you do you, you click on the the retailer's website, and then and then what do you do when you're there? What, how, uh, what's what, the thought process to find all the deals? Uh, if this is if it's showing a deal, if sometimes if the amount of sellers is already perhaps ten or eleven, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of thinking um, that could go up within the next week. So perhaps I know that product is selling. Maybe there's a similar one. So I'll head to Amazon to the with the box on there. It lets you go straight to the product on Amazon, um, and I'll have a look, look around there to see if there's any variations, or I'll just scroll down to similar products and what. Uh, other things people are buying uh, and then once obviously I've clicked on that product Bible Pro sort of tells me if I'm in the right place so it's nice nice so 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 you'll look for variations on the listing that is an OAD see if there's any opportunities yeah. there if not you'll scroll down to the other customers buy this yeah that, yeah that, that you mean yeah and then and then you explore those and again using manual source and accelerator in Bible Pro yes so, yeah Okay, I like it. I yeah. like it. Go down a couple of rabbit holes, and I guess yeah. occasionally you'll find a deal. How often does that happen? Are we talking once a day, once a week? Like, how often would you say that process works out for you? The, the last couple of weeks, I've actually been doing it on every product. So I've set right. myself a purchasing uh, quantity for each day, uh, and I've tried to do half straight from OED, and then some more with my my new. New, new way of doing it just so i get a, a bit of a mix uh nice. but yeah no, it's working out quite nice 
Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. That's good. That's good. So you're getting that extra value from OAD. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Enough, for anybody watching this, onlinearbitragedeals.com as is closing uh, its doors to new members. So I think it's Wednesday at 8 p.m. because the cap in the membership. Um, so I just thought I'd put that out there for yeah. anybody watching because Karen's been making posts about it. So if anybody that doesn't know, get in on that. Obviously, they'll open it again with the one in, one in, one out policy, but Karen's strictly capping it. So if you want to follow Luke's tip, then OAD is available right now, but it won't be for very long. Um, so any tips for using the software? You've talked about a tip already. So is there any other tips? Do you use Profit Protector Pro? I do use Profit Protector Pro, yeah. Mm. How's oh, that? Yeah. yeah, I can. Again, when I first started, it I didn't even know about. Uh, reprices. I had no idea what they were for whatsoever. Um, yeah. And when I only had 15 products listed, it wasn't too bad because I could go through them and and adjust the price uh, when I needed to. But what I didn't know then was I was listening to Amazon. So Amazon would say to me, you need to be more competitive with your price and match this price. And I was going, oh, okay, I'll, I'll match the price. I'll match the price. And then I still wasn't selling any. So I'd go back in and lower the price um, and I'd get a sale and go, oh, I made a sale. Uh, and then I'd, I'd look into the profit and there, there wasn't any. It was like 6p. Uh, so when I obviously, yeah. Uh, uh, it, yeah. The, the, so that's the, when you were doing it manually. So yeah, that's so, you were doing that manually and you found it. Yeah. Oh, damn, I only made, made six pence on that. Yeah. So, so then you found Profit Protector Pro and how has that changed things for you? It's changed, yeah, it's completely changed it. Um, I found that straight through Bybot Pro. Like it just made, they made sense together. Um, and now I, I just set it and I, I don't I don't even touch it. I set my minimum and my maximum um, prices. Um, I've chosen the, the balanced sales algorithm and, and off it goes. It's brilliant. And are you, are you selling for more using Profit Protector Pro then? Are you selling faster and for more, would you say? Yeah, definitely, definitely more. Um, it is strange because you go to I go look at the buy box sometimes on a certain product if I think it hasn't sold for a while and it, it might be at 14 quid. Um, and then I'll make a sale for £27 the next day. I think, <laughs> how, did, how did that happen? But yeah, so it's brilliant. Um, what, but every, all the other sellers are still at £14? They're, they're still there. Yeah. 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 Because yeah when you, sorry, go on. I was just going to say because you you know in your head what your products are selling for. So sometimes a number yeah. comes up at twenty seven quid. You think I haven't got anything selling for twenty seven quid, and it's yeah. Uh, yeah, it's found you an even better price than you were the hoping for. So yeah. it's miraculous. It's it's like people yeah. that don't use Profit Protector Pro maybe don't use a repricer or or use a rule based repricer. They don't realize what they're missing because no. like there's some people out there saying algorithms don't work and algorithmic repricers mm. don't work. Well, well. Yeah explain that then do you know what i mean explain luke yeah. and tons of other users just like him that that use profit protector pros algorithms and get really really outstanding results so yeah. your your favorite your favorite um one is balanced that's what you use is it luke yeah i i actually i didn't realize i had but i had it sent or uh, set to i'm not going to remember the exact name because there's so many options <laughs> on there but it was on yeah it was on cautious yeah something strategy yeah, uh, and I, I went to recheck it the other day. I had that set as the default. Yeah, um, and I realised that it should have been on balanced. And as soon as I put it on balanced, and the, yeah, the last couple of days has been much better sales. So awesome! Have you have you tried have, have you tried Super Aggressive Dominator? I have. I had uh, Amazon jump on a couple of listings uh, at the end of last year, yeah. um, and I'd held on to the products for probably four months, and thought, if yeah, if I can just use the aggressive um, option. And get at least just get my money back so I can reinvest it. And yeah, yeah. So I, I used that. And did it did it take the buy box off Amazon? Yeah, yeah. They were they were gone quite quick, which was great. <laughs> yeah. Again, a lot of people get scared of like, what if Amazon jump on a listing, or what if they're already on a listing? I can't sell it. Well, most fast selling, most most of the best selling products on Amazon, at least in the OA game, are being sold by Amazon. So. I think you're yeah. restricting yourself a lot by not selling against Amazon and, and people that think that you can't get the buy box off Amazon. It's not true. Sometimes they just share yeah. it. And the times when they don't, you just have to use a tool that can kind of do the yeah. business. 
Well, I, I got stuck with products before that I'd bought before I was using any software that I was yeah. trying to sell. And I was trying to battle with Amazon and they were just beating me down and just never give me the buy box. So again, with BuyBot Pro, with the little smiley face telling you that Amazon share the buy box, uh, I now know so it's worth it's worth going going with them sometimes. Whereas before I was scared off because they they didn't want to play. But now I, I again yeah. I know if they if they are sharing it. So that's priceless nice. as well. It's very useful. No, that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So we've talked about uh, complete tips. What are your biggest challenges you faced in, in your business? What's, what's the biggest thing that kind of makes you go, damn, I wish this wasn't like this? Or is there anything that stand out? Is it work getting in the way of doing your business? Is it time? What, 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 what's your biggest challenge? Capital? It's, 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 it's between capital and time. Uh, yeah. With the, with the private label um attempts and some other financial drains i haven't been able to reinvest uh, the money that i'm making every month so for the in the eight months or nine months i've been doing it properly i've kind of just been treading water or maintaining the business yeah um if i would if i'd have been reinvesting the money then I, I, it would have gone up so much quicker so, so have, yeah, you the, taken, have you been taking your profits out yeah yeah it's okay. i mean it sounds like a bad thing when I say it, but it's paying. I've got a, a couple of loans from the, the private label stuff that I did, so it's basically paying that, um, which is great because it means I'm not I'm not paying them. So that could that could be anything. That could I could have bought a car or you know something like that, and it, it would be certainly paying for that. Yeah, no, that's um, so. But if you was obviously if you was re so you would like to be in a position whereby those loans were paid off. So then you could reinvest the profits and obviously compound your income over time. That that makes a lot of sense. So is it fair to say then in your nine months, when you first started out, you were like, can this work? Can this not work? Was you was you skeptical over online arbitrage as a business model or were you slam dunk? Yeah, this is definitely going to work. How did you feel at the start compared to how you feel now? Uh, I'm just questioning myself there because when I started, I lost a ton of money. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> I think what it was, I lost the money um, and then realized it was still something nagging at me. There's people doing it. Other people are doing it. So it was a kind of a quest to find out how they were doing it. Uh, yeah. And then once, yeah, and that's software led me to, ah, I, I see the, way, the information you need now. But nice. um, and then it quickly became obvious it was a very viable thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like, I like, I like the process of seeing somebody. They're so skeptical at first, and the, and the, I mean, maybe, maybe this wasn't you, but they're skeptical, asking the the most not not weird questions, but the most like beginner, obvious questions to us, having done it a while, and then yeah. they're asking these questions, and, and and like you can tell they're getting their head around it, and then I love that moment where they give it a try, and hopefully, usually, it works out for them, and then. And then very quickly, the, you see them kind of in, contributing in the Facebook groups like they've been doing it for their whole lives and stuff, and like a duck to water. Definitely. Like it was always obvious it was going to work. But I love, I love seeing that skeptic go to, no, this is a real thing. This is actually working. Um, I think because you can start with such a small amount of money. I mean, I did start with £1,500, but it doesn't have to be that. It could be £500. And yeah. once, like you say, once you see people get excited so quick, because once you make a couple of sales, it, it gets you. <laughs> it's real. It's real. The moment yeah. you make the sale, it's yeah. real. I always yeah. say your first sale is your best sale because you just proved it works. As yeah. long as it's profitable, you just proved it works. So you don't yeah. have to have made I, I always congratulate people on the first sale because I think the first sale is the most exciting one. Because yeah, you can make a million pound in your business, but that first pound is the start of that journey. Yeah. You know, whether your journey becomes a 10 grand a month business, a one grand a month business, a hundred grand a month business, it all starts with that first sale and that, that belief yeah. comes about by that first sale. I love that. Definitely. Yeah. So if you could go with it for a drink with any person dead or alive, who would it be? Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> Haven't got an immediate answer. Um, no, fun, isn't it? it's weird. It is, yeah. Well, I, I'm a martial artist. Uh, uh, so I'm going to say Bruce Lee because it's, it's yeah. the, it's the most obvious one. And he, he was really uh, into his philosophy, which is yeah. something I, I try and do. So, uh, well, yeah, what, I think. What, yeah, martial, what martial arts do you do? I did it from a very young age. Uh, the last thing I did was Wing Chun. 
which was okay. what Bruce Lee studied before he got into Jeet Kune Do. So, so yeah, it was. Uh, is that is that is that all this stuff? Is it like the kind of like punch like that? Is it is it that or it's, is yeah, that it's yeah. it's close contact uh, Chinese boxing? So yeah, short punches. Yeah, the one yeah. Inch, yeah, yeah, the one inch punch and okay, so, but it's uh, yeah, that was good. It was good fun. So you do not do it anymore. I broke my arm. I broke. I came off a balancing beam playing with my kids, and I broke my uh, my ulna and my radius in my arm. I snapped a pair of them. Um, so I've got some metal and stuff in my arm, which slowed me down a bit. Okay. But, uh, so when, but, uh, when when did that happen? Is that a few years ago or something? Four four years ago, I think. And you've not so, done it since, but you were doing it from a kid. If, yeah. Well, yeah, from fourteen, fifteen. Uh, a few different arts, but yeah. So, so it, what what was the biggest like the biggest belt you got then in that? Uh, I was I was a senior, so an assistant instructor in Wing Chun. Um, I got What's a, that? Is it, does it not have a belt system? It's a, it a green two, so you, they're sashes in in Wing Chun. Okay. Uh, I got a brown brown two in Shotokan Karate. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I did a bit of that. And a did purple a belt in Japanese Jiu Jitsu. So, oh yeah. wow! So quite quite a rounded fighter, I imagine. Do you see yourself as a fighter or not so no. much anymore? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, okay that's cool so what what keeps you up at night that you worry about these are these are weird random questions about yeah, loot. yeah. uh different night amazon disappearing <laughs> really <laughs> yeah yeah um because yeah because it's, for now it's it's paying off my uh my debt um yeah. I, I think once i've um once that's cleared and uh and there's money coming in that I can I can use and build with. I'll be a little happier. But yeah, at the moment it's uh, oh, what if Amazon decides to press pause or, or or kick me out or something? That'd be a problem. Yeah, yeah. Amazon's not going anywhere. Amazon's not going anywhere. I, there's always everyone lives, lives in fear of it. But Amazon are just yeah. going from strength to strength. And I think the days of Amazon, um, the the worry of Amazon saying, oh, actually we don't need you sellers are behind us because ultimately the vast majority of sales on Amazon now are by third party sellers. So I think they've yeah. even come to the realization that one of their biggest strengths is having this width of products because people like you are going and sourcing stuff that nobody else is sourcing. Yeah. And that's yeah. one of the biggest advantages. They've got millions of sellers all sourcing weird and wonderful stuff that they couldn't source themselves. Yeah. So I, I I understand it, but I don't think it's going anywhere. I really no. don't. Um, okay, so what do people seem to misunderstand about you? Um, being a mechanic, uh, when I'm at work and they're telling me what they're doing in the evening and asking me what I'm doing in the evening, it's very different. Yeah. So I think they they underestimate um, my plans and my visions because I don't I don't really tell them about my Amazon business. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a secret, right? Um, so yeah, they so they see you as a bit of a, uh, for want of a better word, grease monkey. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and and you know you're more than that. Yeah, and I'm yeah, yeah. and it's uh, yeah, it's quite frustrating sometimes. I, it, it does uh, it does great on you, especially when you you know you're doing things like this and I'm building my business all the time. It's like it's uh, kind of want to tell everyone, but I'm going to build it first and then yeah. Then no, show, I know. I know the feeling I've been underestimated my entire life and it's something that you kind of uh, get used to, but um, yeah. I've got loads of stories that, that are just, just that people, people you're thinking you are X and sure. you're so much more than X and you know it, but they don't yeah. know it. And sometimes it's frustrating when they judge you as that. Exactly. I, I can tell you're quite uh, uh what's the right word. You're quite a uh, eloquent um I don't know if intellectual is the right word, but I, you come across I'll, as quite. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, you come across as quite intellectual. <laughs> I, I think I can tell. I can tell you got a lot going on, but some people will just. Oh, he's just a mechanic, and it's like, no, yeah. he's not just a mechanic. A mechanic is what he's done for a while, but he's not just a mechanic. So, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you, because that's that's what goes around in my head every day. So, yeah, I appreciate what, that. That, that people are thinking that, or that yeah. you're thinking that about yeah. yourself. Okay. That they're thinking that about me. Um, 
So yeah, it's good. I think that's what I love about the business because I'm actually creating something that I can I can then say, well, this is you know this is what I've done. This is what I can yeah. do. Yeah, no, it's cool. Um, so if you could turn back time and go back to being 21, uh, what would you tell yourself? Don't waste time. Yeah, and re- and relax. It, it'll all be good. Um, it'll be, it'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. That's- It'll be all right. So when you say don't waste time, what do you think you wasted time on? I think now I haven't got as much time to focus on business and 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 things like that. I think back, I think back to the afternoons, Sunday afternoons with a hangover laying on the sofa and thinking, <laughs> what a waste. What a waste. There's so much more I could have been doing. Was you a big drinker when you were younger then? It was just that it was the weekend. It was the it was how everyone met up and it was just the thing to do. Um, the martial arts kept me out of that to a certain degree, but it yeah. meant the weekends I did miss because I was training. But then when I did go out, it was, yeah, Sundays were wasted. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I, I feel you. I feel you. But I think it's a stage that most of us have been through yeah. at some point. And I, I suppose I try not to live with any regrets, but um, wasting time is one of those that I'm going to look back and go, why didn't I do more? But at the time, yeah. you don't know, dear. At the time, you don't yeah. see it, you know. But no, it, it, was, it was great fun at the time. So, yeah, no no regrets, but maybe a so, few adjustments. Have you got any message for people watching this that maybe are thinking about going into starting their Amazon business? Um, what would you say to them? Absolutely, 100%. Give it a try. I've got yeah. very little time, very little knowledge of selling things, products, markets, anything like that. Um, and it's working for me. It, 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 it does work. So just awesome. try it. Definitely give it a go. Awesome. Now, I do know, Luke, we're, we're about to wrap it up. I knew, do know that you've got a Facebook group. Is that right? I have. Yep. Okay. Uh, what, what's your Facebook group called? And what, what's it about? Because I've got a feeling that people watching this might want to join. That would be awesome. Yeah. It's uh, online, Luke, uh, selling and selling Amazon FBA. Uh, it's growing really nicely. We've got a lot of great people in there from uh, people that haven't even started yet, actually, to people that are doing better than me. So yeah. we've got a real mix of people in there just sharing ideas, asking questions, uh, and, and just getting involved, enjoying the journey. Yeah. And, the, and the, you, the idea is, look, you're not trying to pretend you're some expert. You've just been dead transparent, dead open. Yeah, yeah. You're doing this in your spare time. You're a full-time mechanic. Uh, you got kids, you got a wife, but you are in a business and you're sharing <laughs> and you're sharing your journey in your yeah. Facebook group. So if you guys want to share Luke's journey with him, I would share your journey with him and, and see how he gets on, then go on over to online Luke. What do they type into Facebook to get it? Online Luke. Um, online Luke, how to sell on Amazon FBA. So go type that into Facebook, into the thing. You'll find his group, hit join, and Luke will let you in. You can share your journey with him. Definitely. Great to have you there. Great stuff. All right, Luke, that's everything, mate. Unless there's anything else you want to say or any last messages, we'll wrap it up. That's great. Thanks for having me on. It was good fun. Nice talking to you. No, no. Thanks ever so much for jumping on. I appreciate it a lot. I know we've we've missed each other a couple of times. I've been trying to get you on in the daytime, and, and <laughs> like, like, oh, but you did have a call with me, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. So, so, no, thanks ever so much, Luke. Appreciate it no massively, problem. mate. Um, and yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this, please give uh, the video a thumbs up. And if you want to speak to Luke or, or watch him on his journey more, go join his Facebook group. But yeah, thanks ever so much, Luke. It's been cracking, mate. Um, Loved it. Yeah. No, awesome. You've been a great guest. Thanks a lot, buddy. Nice and one. thanks, Matt. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Bye. See ya. Bye.